Hi, um, so we're starting a new project, um, two dogs, as per usual for me. <laughs> um, I've already placed it onto a A1 um, background, because um, that's the size of the picture it's going to be, but my intention is to actually have the dogs as the main focus. So... What I plan to do is to draw out the Airedale completely and then group it together so that it's one block. Um, and then draw out the Fox Terrier again, group it together so it's all one dog. So that I can then move the Fox Terrier, I'm hoping to move into the front of the Airedale. Um, that's my intention. So that really when I come to it, my my the picture of the dogs, the dogs will be kind of sort of like that, a much bigger part of the picture rather than loads of background, um, if that makes sense. Um, but obviously I've got to draw the picture of the dogs first, I've got to draw the dogs out first. Um, so I'll just resize that. Um, so as I usually do, I start... Um, on the face um, and I tend to go for nose or eyes um, first because that kind of frames the face then um, and then I build around it. I'm doing all these kind of hand gestures that you can't see but you know it's good. <laughs> um, okay so I start over here with a pen tool um, so I always do my outlines in red uh, rather than black um, because obviously if I'm working on something that is black you can't see them um, and uh, I just like red it just kind of blends into most colours so it doesn't look really odd well not too much anyway um, so I zoom in nice and tight so that I can see much more of the shapes and uh, I just start drawing around the shapes um, with something that's quite as um, technical as noses and eyes and things I don't tend to use posterized so much um, it, it works quite well you know in general fur areas but I don't think it gives me uh, quite enough detail um, so uh, obviously I use the fill tool, so I go over, pull it across to the bit that I've just blocked off, find the colour within that that I want to use, and I try and tend to use the palest colour that I can find within that area, and then fill it in. Um, I quite like this little blob here. Sometimes just little blobs just make all the difference. <laughs> That's a really nice pale area up here. Um, I'm acutely aware that I tend to make my patterns too complicated. But I would much rather have a too complicated pattern that I can simplify as I'm going on than, uh, than a pattern that's not complicated enough, if that makes sense. It's easier for me to look at my pattern because I make a full colour pattern, to look at it and go, well, those two colours, those two areas there are virtually the same colour, so I can blend them to and make a bigger area. If I make it too simple, then I, you you lose. Um, you can lose some of the, the, the def defining areas that you really need. So here we go. You'll notice that I actually go over quite a lot of the areas. So this but this one that I've just put in, I've just gone over the two areas that I've already coloured in. That's the beauty of using um, something like Affinity Designer because it's all built on layers. So I can show you the layers. Um, so let me just fill this one in to start with, with colour. So that's gone over two layers. I don't want it over two layers. I want it behind them. So um, it's actually 
as I say there, it's not gone over two layers. You can see it's actually gone over one of the layers. This, this lightest grey here, it's actually gone behind. But it's gone in front of this slightly darker grey. So what I want to do is I want to just push it. Uh, if I've just put up the, the layers chart on the right hand side here. So you can see this um, layer here that's in the slightly um, lighter grey is the one that I've just drawn in. And this one that's behind here, you'll see, is that's the one that I've just drawn in. That's the one that I want in front of. So I'm just going to move it up, put it up above it, and there we go. Okay, go back to the pen tool. And keep filling in my colours. Okay, that's come in front of some and not in others. So we'll just send it back. And we can afford to go right the way around here. doesn't have to be absolutely precise as long as you're getting lots of nice areas to that you will be able to cut out of different fabrics. You'll see probably on the left hand side that what looks like a rather large blob of black but I'm going to kind of show you one of the things you can use to help find you some areas of pattern in a minute. But we'll just fill this area, this side in. That's gone in front, so I'm just going to drop it behind. That's what I mean by being able to go right the way across, you haven't got to fiddly try and pull in all the colours, the, all the little lines and go fiddly around it. What I have done is I've not, I just need to pull this right up here so that it goes all the way up the top of that bit. And there we go, and that's dropped behind nicely. We'll go back up here and put on the pen tool. A bluey grey there, quite nice. Pickles here, quite a greeny grey there. A browny grey there. <laughs> and we've got quite a nice patch of light grey here. And like I said, we've got quite a fairly blobby black area. You can kind of just about see it. I can just about see a nostril there. But um, I'm going to go on to a tool now, which I think um, probably not, most people probably don't use it, but I find it really good. And um, it's, I mean, there's a whole range. I've just opened up the studio here and... Of adjustments and there's a whole range of things you can use I mean you can go black and white um, you can change the, the brightness which actually does help sometimes if you go you can go really light even that you see that's brought out the um, shape of that nostril quite nicely just going taking the brightness up an area uh, a fair squidge um, I could quite easily now block that area off but it's important that I don't fill the colour in because the colour is wrong. The colour is not right. Um, but I have got a pattern to use. And in fact, I can see this is quite nice. There we go. And this is definitely a slightly darker area going through here. Uh, and then I'm just going to take 
that adjustment brightness down. Um, and those ones that I've just done, I'm just going to take off for a minute because I want to show you another one that we can use. Um, so we'll open those back up again. And it's the threshold. And threshold basically changes the whole picture into black and white. And it looks kind of terrible like that. But what we can do is we can change the intensity of the threshold. So at the moment it's at 50%, so it's 50% white and 50% black. What I want to do, if I wanted to, if I was to go up, it would just make it blacker and blacker and blacker. Okay, but I'm going to bring it right, right down. Okay, let me just go close up to my nose. And as I bring it down, you will see we get the pattern of the nostril and we get patterns going across and I can just move it up and down and each of these areas is going to make a nice area for me to make a pattern from. There we go. So there's another tool that you can use um, to help you find things where, where it's really dark. And you need things several, there's a really big area and it needs to be broken up. Okay, so I'm also going to put these back in because these were sort of quite nice areas, weren't they? So I'm not too worried about the fact that that the areas are very similar colours because it doesn't matter at this stage because I can use fabrics that are... I can use still use all black fabrics on here if I wanted to but they could be different black patterns there are different shades of black you know it's not just one black so um even if it look, all still looks back black once i filled it in i've still got areas of different blacks and that's the important thing my nostril is going to be my blackest bit so i'm just going to use the black that's there these ones i'm going to find there's quite a see there's quite a brownie color up here there we go. Uh, this is quite a dark colour though here. So just fill that in. And you'll see uh, on the right hand side up here, this round, um, right at the top where it says colour, this round area with a stripe through it means that there's no colour on it. So I've used the fill that you see the blue there. I've used that to find the colour by dragging it down and then I'm just going to click on that and it goes, that's the colour that it's that it found. Um, the only trouble with this sort of thing is sometimes you can't always find the areas that you filled in you haven't filled in. <laughs> you seem to feel, oh there's one, it's not filled in you see. So we come down here, it's got a brown colour going through there. Right, I'm going to take the um, photo away so I can see what where I've got to fill in. Okay, so I can see there's quite a few areas there now. And now because I've got quite a lot of shapes on there, I, I can afford to be a little bit more um, robust with my outlining so I'm not going around any of the edges because I'm just following the edges that I've already got here joining it up finding this quite bluey black in there and I'm going to go quite across here because there's quite a pale bluey area there fill it in and just drop it to the back one up from the photograph and there we go That makes life a lot quicker when you've just got a few shapes in there already.
a bit straight across there because it could just drop behind all the other layers. Okay, I'm just going to check what disappeared then. Yeah, so you can see that um, when I click the colour on, it disappeared behind this one. So I'm just going to go... Find it again. There we go. I've dropped it behind everything, so I'm just going to bring it up to one above. There we go. So that's, you can see there's a few little different colours in there. So uh, I'm going to break it down within there as well. Just going to put a slightly smaller area in there. And go back and fill that area in. So that's kind of most of my nose done. Can take this aside. This across here, pull it out a bit. It's come too far forward, so you go back. Now I'm going to take the photograph away again so I can see we go just got a few areas that are not filled in, and I'm just gonna pull these closed around them. Because you're just not going to notice that much. There we go. There's my nose. Photograph back on. Um, looks a bit odd, obviously, because it's outlined in red. So if I just, what I do, and I'll just take that off for a second and show you what it looks like without all the outline. I just select it all, go up here, and put my outline to invisible. Take that off. There we go, that is my nose. And I'll just put the photograph back on again. And then when you come out, you kind of can't see that it's um, drawn anymore. So that's looking perfect. Okay, so that's this little go. And we stop there. See you another time. Okay, so I'm going to do some fur now. Um, I'm going to switch in and out of posterize um, just to see how it kind of looks. So I'm just going to bring the level up a bit. Five, six, seven. I'm going to stop at eight to start with. Uh, as usual, I just um, zoom in quite tight, even with this. It's quite a easy... Just going to put a colour on my outline. There we go. Block in some of this. Because uh, I've got it on posterize, I'm not going to put the colour on at the moment until I come out of that. But I do switch in and out because sometimes I don't find it picks up quite the 
direction of the fur, I suppose, that I want it to. It doesn't pick out some of the major parts. Um, so I will always check. Again, you'll notice I'm just going straight over the top of some of these areas because they're going to, it's in a layer, remember, so I can put it behind certain layers. So each one of these shapes is in it, its own layer, so I can move it behind another one of the shapes. I'll do a certain amount and then I'll come out of this and go back to just the photo. Oops. too much further than that otherwise it's going to be too big of a piece so stop it there The only trouble sometimes with um, zooming up is you kind of lose track of actually where you are. And sometimes you also lose track of how small the pieces you've done. And um, sometimes the pieces are just way too small to seriously be able to cut out. So you do have to be a little bit careful about that. going to come out a little bit see where I've got to come out pretty well let's do a little bit more and then I'll go come out of this adjustment back onto the photograph and put the colours in so I'm not too fussy about exactly where my shapes are. I'm just roughly drawing around them. It can be a bit... I mean this is a slow process in itself so you don't want to slow yourself down too much. Just go to see these, oh, all my levels, all the individual pieces. If I hit that one, it's there. That one's up there. So just come down to where I put the put the adjustment on and just untick that box for the moment. And this has now gone back just to my photograph. So I'm just going to come back out and start putting some of the colours in. Just make sure I'm happy with the shapes it's created. Yeah, it looks okay. So, I'm gonna use my fill finder. Just go to each piece. Uh, where I've got one in the middle of another shape, always do that one first, so, because when I fill in the, the larger shape, you won't be able to see the color. <laughs> But again, if you do, you could just undo it and come out of it. It's going to fall in quite a few areas, okay. 
that behind. Okay. Let's put that over the top so I can drop that behind. Can come on forward. right to the back, just kind of in front of the photograph there. So I haven't filled this one in, so you can see, you can still see the outline but it's not the right colour, it's just gone to the colour of the big area that I've just done, so I'm just going to go back to the big area, untick that for a second, and it has done it, but it's obviously a very similar colour, so I'm just going to do a slightly different colour, go back, put that back in, it's better. Just gradually filling all of these areas in with the colour. That's why I don't tend to use posterizer that much because it does slow me down because uh, this is it's really a kind of two part process really. Um, when I'm just doing it freehand from the picture I automatically fill the colour in. So I haven't got to go back over it. over here okay so what I'll just do is take the photograph away so you can see kind of what we've done in this session there we go doesn't look like much. <laughs> um, uh, all what I'll also do is just uh, select it all and show you what it looks like as a pattern. So by selecting it all, I'll just change the background to white and that to black. And so that's how the pattern's looking. So I would cut individually cut out all of these pieces. Um, but I'm just going to go back because I don't want that at this stage. There we go. So there's still quite a lot to do.